chapter on unit four, lesson one, describing and graphing situations. So first, let's talk about a bagel shop. Um, a customer at a bagel shop is buying 13 bagels. The shopkeeper says that would be 1625. Jada, Priya, and Khan, who are in the shop, all think it is a mistake. Jada says to her friends, shouldn't the total be 1325? Priya says, I think it should be $13. Han says, no, I think it should be $11.25. Explain how the shopkeeper, Jada, Priya, and Han could all be right. So not who is right, although there might be someone that you think is right. How could they all be right? And then we'll talk about the table later. But for right now, maybe think about it yourself and then figure it out with your group, come to a conclusion. How could they each be right? And we'll do three minutes and then we'll assign a reporter and get started. <laughs> Can you can tell me how the shopkeeper is correct. He offered one bagel price. One bagel price. What is the price per bagel? One twenty-five. Okay, good. So one twenty-five times how many bagels, Seth? Is that equal to sixteen twenty-five? Yeah, so that's where the shopkeeper got that price. That's how he could be right. So then table three, your reporter, how could Jada be right? Table three. Okay, sure, Han. How is Han right? Okay, good. So I'm going to represent that with some math. But for one bundle of 12, so that's where I'm getting one from, it's costing $10. And then since we're buying 13 bagels total, that still means I need to buy one more bagel. One bagel costs a dollar twenty-five. So that is where Han got the eleven twenty-five. Does that make sense? That would be the price for however many twelve we get. And he's getting one set of twelve. So yes. Um, then table four. What about Jada? Where is she getting the thirteen twenty-five from? Oh, she bought like two, like two packs of bagels, and then one thing. Okay, so how much do the six packs cost? Um, so since you're buying two of them, we're going to multiply, right? So you're spending $12 on the first 12 bagels, and then plus so the 13 bagels total, plus one more, which costs $1.25. Um, so that does give me $13.25. That is how Jada is right. Now, table five, what about Priya? Where is she getting thirteen dollars from? Well, if we tried one pack of 12 bag bagels, how much does that 12 pack of bagels cost? Mm -hmm. And then did they say anything about like a special, like if you buy 12, you get another one for a dollar? Or anything like that? So that 13th bagel isn't costing $1 or $3 actually. Sorry, I was thinking of another one. Because Priya is paying or thinking it should be $13. We're not saying that that last bagel that she needs to buy to make it 13, um, we're not saying that that bagel is $3. How much is that bagel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that can't be what she's thinking. That's more like what Han thought. So how else could 
free to like play around with the menu to possibly come up with that. Okay, so a bundle of six. And then that means she would need 13 minus six is seven. So then how are we gonna pay for the other seven? And then have it equal $13. All right, table one, can you help out? What did Priya do to come up with $13 for that cost? If you guys know all the questions in advance, I really wish you guys would anticipate, like, okay, what was this table has that question? Maybe I should hurry and figure out what these other questions can be. So Priya, table one, how could she have come up with $13? It's like the only bundle that we haven't addressed yet. So table one, what's the only bundle that we have not addressed yet? I've now made the question a little bit easier so that you can kind of get to the answer. So just stop trying to figure things out. Just listen. Look at me, table one. Everyone, like everyone. Just listen to the question I'm asking. What's the only bundle price of bagels that we have not addressed yet? Did we address the single bagel price? Sorry, what was that for that? Nine bagels. So for nine bagels, how much does that cost? Now, combine one bundle of nine for eight dollars. <laughs> How many more bagels do I need to buy if there's 13 total? Four. Yes, it is four more bagels that we need to buy. Is there a special price table one for four bagels? So then what's going to be the price for each bagel? For the four that I still need to buy. Sorry, one more time. So since it's a dollar twenty-five each, like for each bagel, um, anytime it's a word like that, each per every, it implies multiplication. Now see what happens when I put that in my calculator. What's four times one point two five? Five. Five. What's five from eight? <laughs> So that is how Priya got that. All right, questions on anything we just said? All right, now what we're gonna do for the table is fill it in with what the best price is for whatever number of bagels. So like we just talked about when it's 13 bagels, what's the best price for 13 bagels? Um. Hans, because we're getting the same amount of bagels for cheaper. So like in the table, I would fill in for 13 bagels, the best price is 1125. You're gonna now complete the table with your group for all the other numbers of bagels you have under 13. So do that, I'll give you, I don't know, a minute or two, you can use the calculator. So I don't imagine it'd be very long um, that you need, you just gotta know work it out in that real world situation based on these bundle prices. So the best price for each number of bagels. Two, best price for one bagel. 0 0.27. Okay, how do you get that? Okay, now is the shopkeeper probably going to honor that price? So I can see what you're saying, like, when they buy 13 bagels, they all cost 
0.87 at the best price. But what if I'm just buying one bagel? What's the best price? A dollar? A dollar twenty-five. There's only one price for one bagel, right? So for one bagel, the best price is a dollar twenty-five. Um, table three. When it's two bagels, what's the best price? Two dollars and thirty cents. All right, so where are you getting that from? What did you have? Plus what else? A dollar twenty-five. Does that equal two fifty? What does it equal? Two fifty. Sounds like. But yeah, we added the right thing. We know that it costs a dollar twenty-five each for the bagels. There's only that price for when it's three bagels. Now, table four, when it's three bagels, what's the best price? Okay, good. Table five, when it's four bagels, what's the best price? And that's a seven, by the way. It means it was more like a seven. Five. Five dollars even? Yeah. All right, I think so. Um, Table one, when it's five bagels, what's the best price? And table two, rotate the reporter one more to the right. When it's six bagels, what's the best price? Six dollars even. And why did that price go down? Then like compared to when it's five bagels. Why is it cheaper to get six bagels? Well, that's in table two. So table two, can you answer? Um, why did it get cheaper to, are we listening to table two? Yeah. Why did it get cheaper to buy six bagels than to buy five bagels? Okay. That's the deal. When you buy six, you get like the special discounted price. So if you really only need five, you might as well buy six so you can save a little bit of money. Um, table three, what would be the next for when it's seven bagels? What's the best price? Seven bagels. Seven twenty-five. Okay. Um, table four, when it's eight bagels, what's the best price? Uh, okay, good. Table five, when it's nine bagels, what's the best price? Okay, so where are you getting that one? Okay, and now why the eight? because it's one of the bagel bundle deals. When you get nine of them, now it's $8. So then table one, when it's 10 bagels, 9.25. Table two, not Jude. When it's 11 bagels, what's the best price? Okay, good. And then table three, when it's 12 bagels, what's the best price? Ten, because again, another deal. When you get twelve bagels, you get to save a little bit of money. So it encourages you to buy more. Uh, so really, the shopkeeper probably should have honored the special pricing deals, so that way his customers are encouraged to actually buy more. So yeah, questions on that activity? Thank you, my friend. Questions on this activity? All right, it went much better than it went earlier. I think in third hour, we spent the entire time on this activity. Um, now you might be wondering, what's the point? Well, there's a few points related to the unit, but also you don't want to be like taking advantage of, right? So you got to like have these skills, these are real life skills to be able to figure out 
does it add up? Am I being charged the right amount? Things like that. Um, but specifically for today, uh, we're on unit four now, which is called function. We're going to look at some of these vocab words that are printed on your paper. So it's printed for you. You might just want to like star highlight certain things that I tell you. But first, let's start with dependent variable. So your dependent variable, we've talked about this before, depends on the other variable. So when we're comparing two things, like, I don't know, hours spent working and how much money you make, you got to figure out which one depends on the other, and that's your dependent variable. Where do we usually put the dependent variable when we graph it? On the x-axis or the y-axis? On the y-axis. Here's a nice little trick in case you guys forget. You can make a D with the y-axis, not with the x-axis. And also make an I with the X axis, and you can do the code with the Y axis too. You can only make a D with the Y axis. So your dependent variables always go on your Y axis. If you're comparing like cost, that would depend on the number of bagels purchased or something like that. The cost depends on how much you buy, not the other way around. All right. So since it's on the y-axis, also associate your dependent variables with your y's. So the phrasing that's on your paper is a little bit different, but it's also saying the same thing. A variable that represents the output of a function. Outputs are your y's, essentially. Questions on that? So the y is your output. Now for independent variables. So independent variables are your inputs. They go on what axes? The X axis, good. So again, if you use that little trick I, told, I just told you, that goes up here. Usually it's kind of some sort. That'll kind of give you a hint to know where to graph it. So usually it's kind of some sort, and then might be like number of things, but time. So in other words, it's all the x's of a function. They are your independent variables, your inputs. So questions on that. All right, now I've been using the word function a lot. That's the name of the whole unit. So functions can be represented a bunch of different ways. They could be coordinates, tables, graphs, but not every set of coordinates, tables, or graphs are necessarily functions. It's kind of like where how all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Kind of like that. Um, so here is the definition that's on your paper. A function takes inputs from one set and assigns them to outputs from another set, assigning exactly one output to each input. What's the other word for output? There's a few of them. So what else do we call the outputs? The product, the product like from what we just talked about two seconds ago. Outputs are the what in a function? They are the dependent variable, which goes on what axis? So we're assigning exactly one Y to each input, which is what? X. So we're assigning exactly one Y to each X. Another way you could phrase it, and I like to make things really simple for like myself to understand. If you are looking at coordinates, a graph, a table, then stop turn around. Oh my God. So you need to also know that it's a function if no there's no repeating x's. So if you see that there's no repeating X's with different Y values. 
because you could see that maybe the x repeats but if the same output is there the same y for that x then it's still technically a function but if you have the same x with two different y's now it's not a function so another way to say this statement exactly one y to each x is that there's no repeating x's with different y values on that. Okay. Now this example is only on the screen. If you want to copy it onto your paper, you can, but really it's just important that you understand what I told you. So based on what we talked about for functions, which of these is not a function? Don't say it to me. Think about it. Talk with your group. Come to a conclusion. Which of these are not a function. So Josie, why is that a not a function? Okay. Someone else who has well of it. Um you'll see that why is that a not a function? There's a y value repeated with different x's. Mm -hmm. So which y value repeats? Mm -hmm. Now, class, do we care if the y is repeat? Is that what this says? Exactly one y to each x, or no repeating x's with different y values. So I agree that this is not a function, but that's not why it's not a function. Um, Georgia? Um, so the ones right here repeat. And when you look at the y's, they have different y's. That's what makes it not a function. All right, so that's what you look for. Really, when you look at them, look at all the X's. So like for set B, does anyone think that that one's not a function? All right, well, for set B, if you look at all the X's, do any of the X's repeat? They do not. So automatically set B is a function. So if the X's don't repeat, then that makes it easy. You don't even have to look at the Y. Why well, could all be the same for that point? Like, it just matters about the action. So then, is set C a function? No. And what makes it not a function? Okay, which X repeat? Good. Well, the, these have different Y values, and then same the zeros repeat too with different Y values, but it just has to be wrong once for it to not be a function. So, even if that was the same y value, it's different here. That makes sense. All right, so easy. We'll do lots of that the rest of the unit. Um, really quick, I just need to introduce you to this next, next activity. The one about the dog. But any questions on this? That's like the main point of the whole lesson today. So when we talked about the bagels, there was only one best price. So when you're talking about the number of bagels compared to their best price, that's a function. So when you just talk about, um, I don't know, six bagels, you could essentially charge different prices for six bagels. That would not be a function. Okay, so consider that. Um, we'll do more with the dog activity tomorrow, but let's just read it a little bit. So if we had more time, we would make all these graphs ourselves. You'll see them tomorrow. But the situation. Three days in a row, a dog owner tied his dog's five foot long leash to a post outside a store while he ran into the store to get a drink. Each time the owner returned within minutes. Here's the movement described for each day. Let's just look at day one. So for day one, the dog walked around the entire time while waiting for its owner. And then there's some like additional points. So each day the dog was 1.5 feet away from the post when the owner left. And each day, 60 seconds after the owner left, the dog was four feet from the post. So ordinarily, I give you time to like marinate with that. But based on what I told you, 
We're only looking at day one. Where should my starting point be? Not one. One point five. Good. Because of this information right here. The dog was 1.5 feet away from the post when the owner left. So if the time is since the owner left, zero seconds, then it's 1.5 feet away. So again, we'll continue this tomorrow. Don't leave your notes. That's all we have time for today. The practice is only like four questions.